The third article of the Apostles' Creed says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Luther explains it this way. He says, I believe by my own understanding or strength I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept in the true faith, just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and those of all believers. On the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. Luther's explanation of the third article has always been one of my favorites. And I simply adore it when Luther writes, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit calls gathers, enlightens me and the whole Christian church. So what Luther's saying and what we're confessing when we use the words of the Apostles' Creed is that calling one to belief, calling a human being to faith, is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is God's work so that we may not boast of the strength of the faith that we have because it's been given to us quite frankly as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul says that faith comes by hearing. So our proclamation of the gospel is also then really the work of the Holy Spirit. I can remember very, very clearly when I was a new pastor in my first congregation, I got one question more than any other from the people that I served. And that question was this, why do we say I believe in the Holy Catholic Church? We're not Catholic. And while it is true that we are not Roman Catholic, we most assuredly are Catholic. In the creed, the word Catholic has a small c, and it means quite simply universal. And that expression of the universal church is what we call the church militant and the church triumphant. The church militant is the church here on earth. The church triumphant is the church in heaven. So the whole church is not comprised of just us who happen to hold the faith today, but all those throughout history who have felt, held the faith that we confess in the words of the Apostles' Creed and those whom God has already chosen to give the gift of the church to in the future. Now, some of those people would say, well, we used to say Christian church, and I think that's okay too. But the idea behind saying the Holy Catholic Church is indeed that the church is small c, universal through time and space. Last week we talked a little bit about how Jesus is placed firmly in time and timeless. Well, so is the gift of the Holy Spirit in his church. So we become a part of the communion of saints, both living and dead. And that forgiveness of sins is not a one-time experience for us, but rather something that comes daily because each of us need it daily. Nearly every church service we ever have here at Trinity begins with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the reason for that precisely is because we need both to speak those words of confession, but more especially to hear those words of forgiveness, not just once a week on Sunday, but frankly, every day of our lives, because God is in the business of forgiving sinners, calling them into communion with him and community with one another to become a part of the one holy 
Catholic Church. Now, we also say in this article of the Apostles' Creed that we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. As you heard me read just a few moments ago, Luther says, and we believe, that on the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. So, although each of us, I hope, I believe, when we die, goes directly to our reward, the work of Christ is finished on that last day with that final judgment where we will be resurrected from the dead and receive the gift of life everlasting. And how do we receive that gift? By faith. The gift of the Holy Spirit. This is most certainly true. Thank you.